Hello and welcome. This is the second in a series of short videos detailing the use of Masterframe and Masterframe Pro. In this video, we will be looking at the use of grid lines and levels. We will start a new structure, and we will begin by creating a system of grid lines. As usual, upon creating a new file in Masterframe, we are presented with our frame generation menu. Here we can start with a system of grid lines, which will bring us into our Generate Grid Lines wizard. From here, we can create a system of orthogonal grid lines, a set of curved radial grid lines, or rotated grid lines. Let's just create a system of orthogonal grid lines, and we'll look at the other types of grid lines in the grid line editing environment. If we already know the layout of the grid lines, we can set up our grid lines starting with those in the X direction. We can provide the number of grid lines, a Z start position, the number or letter we want to start with, and grid line spacing. Here, we will say four grid lines, starting at zero, using letters starting with A, and at 6.25 meter spacing. Likewise, in grid line set two in the Z direction, we may specify irregular grid spacing, starting with an X coordinate of zero at grid line label one, then by filling out the spacings of six, eight, seven, and five meters, separated by a semicolon, we will determine the number of grid lines and at what interval. The system of grid lines can be manipulated and edited now that we are in the grid line editing environment. To access the grid line editing environment in any stage, we can go to Create and Add Edit Grid Lines. In this way, additional grid lines can be easily added by simply clicking on the Add Grid Line button. The grid line can now be located in two ways. Since this is a simple orthogonal grid line, the only locator that it needs is a simple coordinate in the Z direction. We can type in this coordinate in the Z direction. Continuing on at 6.25 meter spacing, we will add a new grid line E at a Z coordinate of 25 meters. To create a grid line in the Z direction, we can change the grid line set to set 2. Here we can create a new grid line but place it graphically. We will add a new grid line again, and each time a new grid line is added, you will notice that the draw grid line button becomes activated. This means that you are in a drawing mode, whereby you can quickly and easily place the grid line in a graphical process. Hovering over any of the grid line intersection points gives us a tracking point from which we can measure simply by hovering and moving away from the tracking point to give us a distance measuring tool. With the distance measuring tool, then we can overtype simply by typing in 6.76 to produce a grid line precisely at that distance from the tracking point, and Enter provides new grid line. Again, the coordinate of the grid line can be edited at any stage to move the grid line to a different location. Other features to note on the grid line are that we can control the bubble appearance at either end by saying that it's at both ends, the start, end, or just the end only. Also, the extension of the bubble beyond the range of the grid line can be changed as well, to say that it extends a further 4 meters at this end. Grid lines can also be non-orthogonal, so in this direction if we were to add another grid line and change the type of the grid line to a grid line between two points. Placing the structure on a plan view, we can now perform a similar operation of graphically placing the grid line, again noticing that we're in a draw grid line mode, hovering over in the intersection to get a track point, come out 6 meters at the bottom, and then coming up and tracking out 8 meters from the top. If at any stage you would like to reposition a grid line, you can manually edit the coordinates, or you can redraw the grid line by going into the draw current grid line mode. In the draw current grid line mode, we can replace the grid line by clicking on one of its existing start points, and then moving to a new end point. If we would like to place multiple grid lines graphically, we can go into the Draw Multiple Grid Lines mode. By selecting this feature, we will be able to continue creating new grid lines until we exit, by either hitting the Escape key or again clicking Draw. Curved grid lines can also be created. We can move back to Grid Line Set 1, then add a new grid line in this set. We can then specify the Grid Line Type to be either orthogonal, between two points, or curved. We will select Curved, and now we can set a curve style of either center and radius, between three points, or between two points and arc height. We will select two points and arc height. As we have specified a new grid line, we are automatically put into the draw mode, where we can now easily define our start and end points, then specify our arc height. When all the locators of the grid line have been specified, the grid line is located, the draw current grid mode is turned off, and we are back in the normal grid line selection mode. At this stage, we should note that the orthogonal grids have extended automatically to the range of the structure, whilst the grid lines that are defined between two points remain in their specified locations. We can easily amend these settings for grid lines. For example, if we multi-select grid lines 7, 8, and 9, we can extend these to any specified structure 
by clicking the To Extents button. Similarly, we can edit properties of multiple grid lines within the grid line editor. Shift click lets you select a range of elements, and Control click lets you toggle the selection of single elements in the set. We can then edit common properties for all selected grid lines, which for these grid lines is our grid line type and the ability to lock to nodes, a feature we will cover later. We can determine the naming system of the grid lines within the Rename Grid Lines box. We can assign each grid line set to be either lettered or numbered. We can reverse the grid line letters or numbers for either set, and we can also rename from a particular grid line. For example, in this case, we are renaming from Grid Line 5. Grid lines can also be repositioned either graphically by using the draw function within Edit Selected Grid Lines or by editing the coordinates directly in the property window. Moving on to an existing structure where we currently do not have grid lines present, these can be easily added. As mentioned previously, the use of grid lines is optional. However, we do highly recommend placing grid lines in all structures for ease of referencing of members and also for creation of new structure. To add grid lines to this structure, we simply revisit the Add Edit Grid Lines. Grid lines can be added just like before for a blank structure, simply Add Grid Line, choose the type and then place. If we choose an orthogonal grid line, we can simply go to the ends of any of the existing structure to choose, in this case the Z coordinate of that structure. We can also add a new grid line between two points by simply selecting the start and end of existing members to locate that grid line. Grid lines can also be attached to existing entities using the Lock to Nodes feature. When grid lines are placed using Lock to Nodes, the start and ends are located using a reference to the ends of the members. As those members move, the grid line will move with the structure. Completing out the creation of grid lines, we can now demonstrate the benefit of using grid lines in a structure. Let's create a system of orthogonal grid lines in the other direction and now exit from the grid line editing area. Views are automatically created from generated grid lines, so we can go now to grid line A, then B, and we'll see looking at it on an isometric view that we are only dealing with this filtered part of the structure. This can be extremely useful when working with large structures to allow you to quickly access a view of any one of the grid lines so that you can work on that exclusive subset of the structure, making the management of large 3D structures extremely easy. This concludes this video on grid lines. In our next video, we'll be looking at the creation of levels.